for you. I'm fine, thank you. Long time no see you. Yeah, Ter yeah. One oh, hour. Hour. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible joke. <laughs> yeah, just enough time to eat dinner, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, good. Yeah, sorry, everyone. That was very strange. Um, I started the lesson, and immediately the hangout froze. So I closed out. I went back. Um, and the lesson was no longer in my um, in my schedule, in my teacher's schedule. <laughs> so it was very strange. I had to go um, a different way to find the class um, to rejoin. So uh, my apologies. <laughs> no, I'm glad you you came back. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, that's a new one for me. I've I've been kicked out of the chat before, but this was a strange strange one. Uh, but anyhow, welcome. Uh, this is Poetry for Pronunciation um, and we'll begin in just a moment here. Um, let's see, Ramon and David, um, anything happen in the last hour that you want to talk about? I had dinner, yay. Ah, what did you eat? It's more like a practical thing. I have these uh, sweet potatoes with uh, shrimp and a salad with some salad. Oh, yum. It sounds good. It, it does, yeah, it doesn't sound very tasty, but it was tasty. No, it sounds tasty <laughs> to me and, and pretty healthy, too. That's good. Healthy it is, yes, for sure. <laughs> good, great. Uh, Ramon, any, any news in the past hour? No, no, no. I was in another English class. <laughs> Just ah! that. <laughs> Great, so three hours in a row, very nice. Yes, yes, and here it's already midnight. Oh my gosh, aren't you tired? No, no, I normally go to bed one hour a.m. every day. Oh, great. Well, good, so you'll go to bed tonight with some poetry in your brain. Yes, yes. <laughs> great, great. Um, and let me say hello, um, Lee. Yes, hello, Stephanie, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. Um, where are you from? I'm from Vietnam, but uh, right now I'm living in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, wow. What are you doing in Oklahoma? Oh, just studying. Oh, great. Are you at, um, what university are you at? Uh, yeah, Oklahoma Triple C Community yeah. College, yes. Cool. Cool. Um, I have never been to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Um, well, I'm. My name is Stephanie. Um, I'm from the United States, um, living now in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm from Minnesota. Ah, uh, yes. Minnesota, yay! <laughs> yes. So. yes. New York and Minnesota is very cold in the winter. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, for sure. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Um, do this you, do you week. Live, sorry, go ahead. Do you, still live in, do you still live in Minneapolis or where? Yes, actually, um, that's my hometown. I was born in Minneapolis. Really? Yeah. I live in Minneapolis. I lived in Minneapolis for seven years. Seven years? Oh my gosh! Where? Uh, very, you know, uh, Nicolette Mall. Yeah, downtown. 14th Street, very close to Loring Park. Wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I um, liked Minnesota, but you know, the winter was, they were too long. Yeah, like six months <laughs> sometimes. Um, uh, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, why Why did you live in Minnesota or in Minneapolis? Well, it was not by choice. It was by chance but I loved it I mean I it was it's a beautiful state people are very nice very progressive I have I still have I still have very good friends I still get uh, still in touch with them uh, but I have another opportunity to go another place so but I miss Minnesota in fact when I go there I think for Christmas this year oh amazing um, yeah. I, I'm hoping to as well <laughs> yeah That's and fun. what what is the name of these uh, parade that they have the dazzle something dazzle Oh, holidazzle. The holidazzle. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, I've actually never been to it. Um, oh my God, it's really cold, but you know, people are 
bundled up with you know layers and layers of things, and they're drinking hot chocolate and saying hi to Sana. Hey, Sana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> freezing cold. Freezing cold. <laughs> yes, it's crazy uh, what they'll go out and do in December in the freezing cold. Um, well, that's so cool. I never knew that. Thanks for sharing, David. Um, well, all right. We should have a few more people joining us. Um, that's fine. But we'll get started. Um, the idea behind this class um, is just to use poetry as another tool for improving pronunciation. Um, um, pronunciation goes beyond just the sounds of the language. Um, we also need the rhythm of the language. Um, and stress is very important. Um, and so poetry uh, helps us be aware of stress um, and work on stress and improve our overall fluency. Um, in addition to that, uh, it's good uh, for learning about the culture as well um, and interesting just for the content. Um, today we are focusing on the limerick. Um, so this is a specific rhythm. All of our poems will follow uh, the same rhythm. Um, and this type of poetry is called uh, limerick. Um, so we're going to start with a definition, just what a limerick is. Um, and then we'll go to the poems. I'll read them first um, so you can listen. And then each of you will read each poem. Uh, and I'll give you some feedback. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, limericks are fun poems. Um, so this is a type of poetry that often is funny. Um, and to be honest, it's often vulgar. Um, so um, it's often not appropriate. Um, for, for children or sensitive ears. But let's just look a little bit. So a limerick is a form of poetry. Um, they usually have five lines um, with a very strict rhyme scheme. So the words do rhyme and they have to rhyme in this pattern. The first two lines rhyme, then the third and fourth lines rhyme, and then the fifth line rhymes with the first and second. Um, this uh, is the first known limerick written in Latin. Of course, we're concerned with English, so um, I'm just going to read this one as an example. This is a limerick about a limerick. Um, the limerick packs laughs anatomical into space that is quite economical. But the good ones I've seen so seldom are clean, and the clean ones so seldom are comical. All right. So that's kind of the rhythm you hear. Um, the first two lines are longer, and they have three stressed beats. Uh, the limerick packs laughs, oops, laughs anatomical. So three stressed beats, three stressed beats, um, then two shorter lines, and ending with a longer line again. Uh, so that's our basic form. Um, limericks, let's see, uh, were popularized by this guy, Edward Lear, um, and he was an English artist, illustrator, musician, author, and poet. Um, known mostly for his literary nonsense in poetry and prose, and especially his limericks. Um, so limericks, by their nature, are not serious. Uh, and we'll see a few funny ones. All right. Um, so let's go, uh, actually, I'll pause there. Are there any questions so far? All right, let's go to the poems. 
Um, just a moment. I'm going to say hello. Uh, hello, Eunice. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. And where are you from? I'm from Peru. From Peru. It's nice to meet you. Welcome to class. Thank you. Great. All right. Let's get to our first limerick. Um, we're actually going to start with some by Edward Lear. So these first three are all by Edward Lear. Um, so all very traditional limericks. Um, his limericks may look a little different. Um, most limericks should have five lines. Um, his look different, but really this is, should be two lines. Um, and you'll hear that when I read it. So here is this limerick, our first limerick. It's called, There Was an Old Man on the Border, by Edward Lear. There was an old man on the border who lived in the utmost disorder. He danced with the cat and made tea in his hat, which vexed all the folks on the border. All right. Um, so let's just look at vocabulary. Um, poetry is great for vocabulary. Does anyone have any questions on the vocabulary? Yes, uh, the word vexed. Vexed. Good, yeah. Vexed um, is a, kind of an old fashioned word meaning anger, to anger. Um, or to make angry. So his dancing with the cat and making tea in his hat, it made all the folks angry, made all the people angry. Great. Good question. Other questions? Great. All right. Um, so, at this point, I'm going to have you listen one more time. Um, and I want you to really listen for which words get stress. Um, I wish I could write on the screen somehow um, to underline the stress words. Um, but you'll just have to listen carefully for the stressed words. There will be three stressed syllables here, three stressed syllables here, two here, two here, and three here. Okay? So listen for those stressed words. There was an old man on the border who lived in the utmost disorder. He danced with the cat and made tea in his hat, which vexed all the folks on the border. Right. So in this first line, what three beats did I stress? Or what three syllables? Old man and border? Yeah, yeah. So we should have heard stress actually on was old, old man, and border. Very good. Um, so there was an old, actually on man. I'm sorry. Yep, you, more stress on man. There was an old man on the border. Very good. How about line two? What syllables? are stressed. Uh, lived, outmost, and disorder. Yep, good. Lived in the utmost disorder. Good. Lived in the utmost disorder. Very good. Next line, he danced with the cat. What two words are stressed there? Dance and cat. Exactly right. Danced and cat. And made tea in his hat. 
hat. Yep, hat is stressed. And one more word. Made. And made. Let's see, he danced with the cat and made tea in his hat. Um, tea. Yeah. Tea. Yeah, it's going to fall more on tea. Um, and that's, you know, in normal speaking, we would stress made. Um, but for this poem, it's going to be tea. Good. All right, one more. Three stress syllables, which vexed all the folks on the border. Where is the stress? Vexed folks and border. Very good. Vexed folks and border. All right. Uh, so it is your turn to read it now. Um, the goal, again, is the rhythm. Um, so you really want to have that, try to have that three beats, three beats, two beats, two beats, three beats. Um, do I have a volunteer to go first? I can volunteer. Great. Thank you, David. Go ahead. Right. There was an old man on the border who lived the utmost disorder. He danced with a cat and made tea in his hat, which backs all the folks on the border. Very nice. Very nice. Great. Good, clear rhythm. Um, definitely stress on those stressed words. Um, very nice. Good. This is good practice for really reducing the unstressed syllables. Um, so repeating this to yourself three or four or five times faster um, really helps you reduce those unstressed syllables. Um, thank you, David. Thanks for going first. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go to the right. Eunice, are you ready? <laughs> okay. Um, there was an old man on the border who lived in the utmost disorder. He danced with a cat and made tea in his hat, which vexed all the fox on the border. All right, great. Um, again, very nice rhythm. I heard the three beats, three beats, two beats, two beats, three beats. Um, very good. And again, the same thing, uh, repeating this a couple times a day will really help you reduce those little function words even further. Um, very nice. All right, next up, Lee, are you ready? Yes. All right, go ahead. There was an old man on the border who lived in the almost disorder. He danced with a cat and a key in his head, with wax or the fog on the border. Nice, nice. Um, good, again, good careful attention to the rhythm and really stressing those syllables. Um, nice pitch with utmost. Um, good pitch there. Um, really, really good. Just one word, I think. Um, let's practice just once or twice. Vexed. Vexed. Yeah, there you go. Vexed. Vexed. Perfect, perfect. Great. Sounds good. Um, good. So again, repeating that will, um, and uh, keeping that stress really strong, that will help reduce the unstressed syllables. Good work. And Ramon, your turn. Um, there was an old man on the border who lived in the utmost disorder. He danced with the cat and made tea in his hat with vex on the folks on the border. <laughs> great, great. Um, again, pretty good rhythm. Um, good stress on the stressed words. Um, I didn't really hear any mistakes. So this is one that you just would want to practice even faster in the future. Uh, right. Oh, okay, so that was everyone, just four of us tonight. These are going to go fast, so we're going to definitely get through all of these um, and maybe some of the more dangerous ones. Um, so you can see this poem is a very silly poem. Um, this is not deep poetry, um, but really good for our rhythm. 
Let's go to the next one by the same poet. Um, we won't spend as much time since we're more familiar with the form now. Um, this one is called There Was an Old Person of Nice by Edward Lear. Um, this is the city in France. Um, so we, we keep the French pronunciation, Nice. And this one goes like this. There was an old person of Nice whose associates were usually geese. They walked out together in all sorts of weather, that affable person of Nice. All right. Um, any vocabulary questions here? The word cheese. Ah, this one? Mm -hmm. This is geese. geese. Oh, geese. Oh, yeah, right. with a hard G. And that is plural um, or goose. There they are. So an old man whose friends are <laughs> these. Good. Any other questions? All right, so when we practice this one this time, um, we're going to have stress again on was, on person, and on niece, on associates, usually geese. Um, then our two syllables will be walked out together. All sorts of weather in the last line, that affable person of Nice. Right, those are the stress. Um, this time, because we are a small class um, and these are short poems, I'm going to have you read it once. Um, and I'll, if there's any errors or mistakes, we'll correct them. And then you'll go again and you'll try to go faster. And what that will do, that will help you reduce those function words even more. Okay, so the faster you can go with these, the more you're reducing the function words. Um, for example, this of, you'll barely pronounce at all. That affable person and niece. All right, so let's try that out. Everyone will do it twice this time. Um, David started us last time, so let's have um, Eunice. Will you start for us this time, please? Okay, sure. Um, there was an old person of Nice whose, uh, whose associates were usually geese. They walk out together in all sorts of weather. That affable person of Nice. Nice, nice, very good. Um, all right, I didn't hear any mistakes. I heard stress on the appropriate syllables. Um, so this time your challenge is um, try to go even faster. Okay. There was an old person of Nice whose associates were usually geese. They walk out together in all sorts of weather, that affable person of Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, that seemed that really actually sounded like it was quite a bit faster. It seemed to flow um, very nicely. Uh, great. So great job, Eunice. Lee, your turn. Sure. There was an old person of Nice whose associates were usually geese. They walk out together in all sorts of weather. That affable person of Nice. Good. Good, good. Stress in all the right places. Um, good. Let's, will you say walked for me? Walked. Yeah, walked. Walked. Good, yeah. Keep that vowel nice and open um, and don't pronounce an 
any L at all. No L's at all. Just okay. walked. Walked. Good, good. Good, um, good. all right. So your stress sounded really good. Um, this time I want you to go even faster. Sure. There was an old person of knees whose associates were usually geese. They walk out together in all sorts of weather. That affable person of knees. Nice, nice. Good job. All right. So a little bit faster on that second time. Um, good work. Uh, one fun thing to do with a poem is actually timing yourself reading it. So that is another fun activity you can do on your own um, and see if you can say it faster. Uh, all right, so Ramon, your turn. Hmm. There, was, there was an old person of needs who associated with usually G's. They walked out together in all sort of weather. The affable person of needs. All right, great, nice. Um, this is a hard G, so geese, geese. Geese? Geese, geese. Goose, mm -hmm. one goose, two geese. Ah, uh, geese, geese. Yeah, yeah, perfect. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, good. So, good, I heard stress on uh, the right syllables. You can even reduce... Um, stress a little further on on the starts of the sentences there. All right, so why don't you go ahead one more time as fast as you can. And one more time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, just a second. Uh, there was an old person of niece who associates with using G's, uh, geese. Mm -hmm. uh, they walked out together in all sorts of weathers. The F Affable person of niece. Nice, nice, good. It was a little bit faster. Good job. Um, great. And Carlos Andres, welcome. Hi, teacher. Thank you. All right. So um, you joined us. Uh, just, just joined us. Um, but it's your turn. Hopefully, you've heard the rhythm a little bit. Go ahead and give that a try for us. All right. Uh, there was an old person of nice who associated were usually geese. They walked together in a short weather that a affordable person of nice. Good, good, excellent. Um, this is the city in France. Um, and so it gets the f French pronunciation, Nice. Nice, okay. Nice. Yeah, place in France. So this will rhyme with this. Nice geese. Okay. Uh, great. And the second niece is, is an adjective or is also a, a, that city? It's also the city. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So a little strange there. It does look like the word nice. Okay. Um, good. But uh, good stress, good rhythm. Go ahead one more time a little faster. There was an old person of niece who was sated were usually geese. They're walked out together in all sorts of weather the affordable person of niece. Good, good, good. Great. Um, good. Be careful with associates. The stress falls on the second syllable. Associates. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you, Carlos Andres. And David, your turn. Maybe. David, are you there? David? Okay. You must have stepped away. That's no problem. Let's continue um, on to the next one. Just one more by this Edward Lear guy. Um, and I thought this one was my favorite. <laughs> uh, there was an old man with a beard. Okay, so a lot of his, you can see, start with that same line. 
You know where this dress falls. There was an old man with a beard. So, there was an old man with a beard who said, It is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren, have all built their nests in my beard. So, another very silly poem about an old man. Um, any questions on vocabulary? Great. Probably just uh, types of birds. Um, all right. So for this third limerick, we're going to do something a little different now. Um, we're going to continue focusing on the stressed words. Um, that's very important. And of course, the unstressed words. Um, but this time, when you're reading the poem, um, I want us to play with intonation and pitch a little bit. Um, so, one part um, of sounding native like in English is actually going much higher and lower with your voice. Um, than you probably already do. So that means when I get to a stressed syllable, I'm not only going to say it a little bit stronger, a little bit louder, but I'm also going to say it um, higher pitched, um, except at the end when I put a final intonation on. Um, okay, so so when you hear a stressed word, you should also hear that my voice is, is going up from the unstressed words. Um, so I'm going to read this again. Listen for my voice going high in pitch and low in pitch. There was an old man with a beard who said, It is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren, have all built their nests in my beard. Okay. Um, so your voice is going really pretty high on those stressed words here. Um, and then finally goes down at the end. Okay, and I want you to exaggerate it. It should feel strange to you and it will sound good to me. So exaggerate that intonation, really high and really low. All right. Any questions? All right. So, Lee, it's your turn to start. Sure. There was an old man with a beard who said, It is just as I fear to owl and a hen for locks in a drain have all built their nest in my beard. <laughs> very nice, very nice, good. Um, good stress again. Uh, really good final intonation. I heard it very noticeably go down. Um, in this line, try to go even higher in to owls and a hen or larks and a wren. So really high on owls and larks. Okay. Right, go ahead one more time. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren. Good, good, good. And try the whole thing all together. Okay. There was an old man with a beard who says it is just as I fear. Two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren have all built their nest in my beard. Nice, nice, really good. Um, good, that high high pitch sounded really good, and again, nice low pattern at the end. Good. good. Thank you for going first on that one. Um, moving on, Ramon, your turn. Okay. There was an old man with a beard who said, just as I feared, two owls and a hen for larks and a wren have all beat their nest in my beard. Good, good, good. Again, good stress, good rhythm, um, good speed. I'm going to say you can go 
way higher on two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren. Okay, so just go a little bit higher on those stress syllables, um, especially just. Just owls and larks, I think, are high. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. again? Yeah, one more time. Okay. Uh, there was an old man with a beard who said, it, just, it is just as I feared. Two owls and a hen, for larks and a wren, have all beat their nests in my beard. Very nice. Very nice. Good rhythm, good rhythm. It sounded good. Uh, and don't be afraid to really exaggerate the highs and lows of English. Um, okay. we do, oops, we do it quite a lot. Um, great, thank you, Ramon. You're welcome. Carlos Andres, are you ready? Teacher, um, there was an old man with a bird, who said, it is just as a bird. To walls and a hen, for larks and a rent, how I build their nest in my bird. Good, good, good. All right, the sounds, um, sounds like you're pronouncing everything okay. Um, the rhythm is there, the stress is there. I want you to really, really exaggerate the stress. Um, you can almost uh, clap along. Actually, this is another activity I have students do in pronunciation, um, is clap on the stressed syllables uh, to help make them really strong. So read it again and really say those stressed syllables really, really strong and loud. Okay. <clears throat> There was an old man with a bird who said, It is just as I heard. To walls and I hand for lags and a rent, half a wheel their nest in my bird. Right, very nice, very nice, good. And definitely much faster the second time around. So good, good. All right, David, are you back yet? David, are you there? <laughs> David? All right, I don't know what's happened there. Um, David, if you come back, just let us know. Um, but in the meantime, let's go on to Eunice. Your turn. Okay. Um, there was an old man with a beard who said, It is just as I felt. To all and a hen, for larks and a wren, have all bitterness in my beard. Very nice. Very nice. Um, say this word for me a few times. Feared. 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 Good. Give it a long E sound. Feared. Feared. Yeah, there we go. Great. Um, sounded good. Again, stress those um, those stress syllables even stronger. Okay. All right. There was an old man with a beard who said, It is just as I feared. To oars and a hen, for larks and a wren, have all with their nests in my beard. Very nice, very nice. Um, good high and, and good low at the end. All right, nice work. And that was everyone for this limerick. Um, David? Okay. Um, all right, that was it for Edward Lear. We're going to look at just a few others tonight. Um, and this is the more modern format. Uh, usually these days they are written with the two long lines and the two short lines split. Uh, so this one, uh, we don't know who it's by, but it's called A Bridge Engineer, Mr. Crumpet. Um, and 
again, we're going to do something a little bit different on this one. On this one, I'm going to have everyone clap the rhythm as you say it. Um, so if you felt silly before, um, get ready. <laughs> You're going to be clapping and reciting this. Um, and I'll go first, of course, to show. Um, but just clapping on the stressed syllables really helps you say them more strongly. Um, all of you are saying them correctly. There is stress on the stressed syllables. But all of you could emphasize that stress even more uh, to sound more native-like. Uh, so that's why we're going to be clapping on this one. Um, and so, uh, here, I'll show you. Um, let's go. A Bridge Engineer, Mr. Crumpet by Anonymous. A Bridge Engineer, Mr. Crumpet, build a bridge for the good river bump it. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, well, they'll just have to jump it. So same rhythm, three, three, two, two, and three stressed syllables. Um, and could you hear my clapping? Um, yes, can you do it a little more time? Uh, one more time. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yes, good. I wasn't, I've never done the clapping through online. Um, I do it all the time teaching face-to-face. -face. I wasn't sure if it would be audible. Um, so yes, I'll do it a few more times. Uh, and you're going to hear the claps on bridge, near, and crumb. Uh, bridge, good, and bum. Take, plan, gap, span, said, just, jump. Here we go. A bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, built a bridge for the good river bump it. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, well, they'll just have to jump it. Okay, And I'll just do that one more time really quick. A bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, built a bridge for the good river bump it. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, well, they'll just have to jump it. All right. So a little bit uh, different challenge this time around. And Ramon, it is your turn to go first. OK, I think this is very hard, but let's <laughs> try. Good. A bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet. Built a bridge from the good, from the let let me start again. <laughs> Our bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, built a bridge for the good river bump it. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, "Well, they will just have to jump it." <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, these limericks are similar to tongue twisters. Um, yes, 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 I think so. <laughs> because of the rhythm, you um, really have to get some words in a strange way. Um, but it sounded good, except I didn't hear the claps. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> I that. no problem. Uh, that's what I'm here for. So go mm -hmm. ahead one more time, and this time add in those claps. OK. Uh, a bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, built a bridge for the good river bumpet. A mistake, a mistake in the plan left a gap in the span. But he said they would just have to jump it. Very nice. Great. Great. Okay. Uh, that is good. It's a good exercise for um, nailing the rhythm. Um, yep. Really great. Thank you, Ramon. Thanks for going first. Okay, Ramon. Um, and we're going to go around. Um, Carlos Andres, your turn. Okay, teacher. <clears throat> a bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, 
build a bridge for the Good River Bump. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, well, the Jews have to jump. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm good. It's hard. It's hard this part. You kind of want to put stress there, but no stress until just. You'll just have to jump it. Um, pretty good, but I think your stress will be better if you clap along. So go ahead one more time with the clap. Okay, okay. Our bridge engineer, Mr. Carpet, built a bridge before the Gulf River pump. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the span, but he said, well, they'll just have to jump in, jump in. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> good, it is that. That last part was the hardest part for me as well, getting all that in there. Um, but good, I still didn't hear any claps. <laughs> for me, for me, it's not easy to try that, to coordinate the claps with, with so I speak. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's okay, no worries. Um, you can practice that later on, too. Um, so, good work. Thank you, Carlos Andres. Um, David, are you here? Very strange. I wonder what has happened. Um, perhaps he's just listening to our beautiful recitations of poetry. Anyway, let's Continue. So, Eunice, are you ready? Mm, I will try. <laughs> All right. A bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet. Mm, build a bridge for the good river bumpet. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the spam, but he said, well, they just have to jump it. Very nice, very nice. That was an excellent try. Um, you nailed it. Good. So it takes a little more thinking. Yeah. Clap <laughs> along, but it really it does. That stress stands out even more. So great, great. Why don't you go ahead again, just one more time for speed and practice? All right. Um, a bridge engineer, Mr. Crumpet, will a bridge for the Cold River Pump. A mistake in the plan left a gap in the spam, but he said, well, they just have to jump it. Great. Very good. Very good. Um, and that's that last line, the challenge we have here, that's, that's why poetry is good for pronunciation. Uh, really reducing those so they fit into the rhythm. Very nice, Eunice. Um, all right, so Lee, your turn for this one. Sure. A bridge engineer, Mr. Grumbert, built a bridge for the Good River Bundet. A mistake in the plan left the gap in the span, but he said, well, just jump. Uh, sorry. But he said, well, they just had to jump it. Nice, nice. Um, great. I, I could hear when you were clapping. Um, your stress, your spoken stress was much stronger um, than without the claps. And that sounded really good. Um, so go ahead again one more time for speed and practice. Mm -hmm. A bridge engineer meet the combat. We are bridge for the good river moment. A mistake in the plan let a gap in the span. But he said, well, just have to jump it. Nice. Nice, great, um, good rhythm, good clapping, sounded really good. Um, all right, everyone, that was good. Um, I really can't say enough that, um, especially in American English, you cannot put too much word stress. <laughs> um, it's almost impossible for most learners. Um, so feel free to say those stressed words. Um, it might feel really strong to you, but it sounds normal to me. All right. So we have one more tonight. Um, and I saved this one for last. I think it's one of the funnier ones. Um, and with this one, I want to do the clapping again. Um, so same as last time around. Uh, 
you'll try clapping when you say it. Um, and there is one part to me that is tricky, a little bit different than the other ones we've done. Um, so this one is called How Awkward When Playing With Glue uh, by Constance Levy. Here we go. How awkward when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have stuck nice and tight your left hand to your right in a permanent how do you do. Um, to me the hardest parts are this line to suddenly find out that you Okay, that's a little bit tricky stress pattern. To suddenly find out that you. Um, this is a phrasal verb, so we're going to be tempted to stress out as well, but don't. Your stress goes on find. Um, and this one, you will be tempted to stress left. Don't. The stress goes on hand. Left hand to your right in a permanent how do you do uh, alright so I'm going to do that one more time with the claps listen again here I go how awkward when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have stuck nice and tight your left hand to your right in a permanent how do you do Uh, a how do you do is a greeting, a way to say hello. All right, so this is our last one. Um, and Carlos Andres, it is your turn to go first. Sure. <clears throat> mm -hmm. oh, okay. How, how, how when you play with blue, to suddenly find that you have to nice and thin your left hand your right in a permanent how do you do nice nice good 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 um, yeah so tricky it, the starting is tricky too um, this one is is I think trickier than Edward Lear's um, this word is long I tight tight um, all right so go ahead one more time just for practice how one word when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have to nice and thin your left hand to your right in a permanent how do you do? Good, good. It's not Sounds easy. Pretty good. It's not easy, right? No. You're tempted to put stress on how um, when really it goes here. Yeah, so it's not easy, um, but nice work. That's why. Um, the repeating, repeating, repeating will help it flow better. Uh, very nice. Um, just one thing, tight and right should rhyme. Uh, the only difference should be the first sound. Uh, all right. Thank you for going first. Very nice. David, are you there? I think we may have lost David. Yeah, yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. Ah, no, no problem. No worries. Um, it is your turn for this, uh, our last limerick. Um, okay. All right. And we have been clapping along with the stressed beats. So if you want to okay. try that, go ahead. Okay, let's see if I can do the clapping too. How, okay. How awkward to play with glue to suddenly find out that you have stuck nice and tight. I can do with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're doing fine. <laughs> you left hand to the right in the permanent. How do you do? <laughs> great, great. <laughs> the, and this one is really much more difficult uh, with stress than the others because some unusual stress. We want to stress left. Uh, in normal speech, we would, but in this rhythm, we can't. Um, 
and also with that phrasal verb, find out. Normally we would stress both of those, but here we have to say find out. Um, so a little bit abnormal pronunciation, but good. Um, nice work. Um, let's go on. Eunice, your turn. Okay. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> How awkward when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have stuck a side tight uh, your left hand to your right in you know, permanent how do you do? Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. More difficult than the last one, right? More difficult, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, good, good work though. Um, yeah, I really think this part is so hard. Um, we just want to clap on left. Good, nice work. Uh, all right, Lee, your turn. Sure. How awkward when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have stuck nice and tight your left hand to your right in permanent how do you do? Good, 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 good. Um, excellent. Uh, the other problem is we want to stress stuck. Um, in normal speaking, we would, um, but not in this poem. So the two beats are nice and tight. Nice and tight. Yeah, nice. Good. Um, but good clapping there, especially in the first, first and last lines. All right. Last but not least, Ramon, your turn. Hey. Uh. <clears throat> Should I clap again? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, how awkward when playing with glue to suddenly find out that you have struck a nice and tight your left hand, your right, in a permanent how to do. <laughs> good, good, no. nice. Okay. Uh, and the clapping is a challenge, but it really is. Uh, good. It really sounds good when you hit the beats. Um, you pronounce yes, yes. the stress much better. Um, so thank you everyone for trying that out. Um, I do recommend this practicing these um, as a way to improve your overall um, accent and fluency. Um, and this is kind of an ongoing class, so if you're interested in learning more doing this again um, keep an eye on my profile page um, and uh, that's all I have for you tonight okay thank, thank you. you bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. See you. Thank you, everyone have a good night you too. thank you bye bye